Good afternoon, hello, welcome to the Triathlon Down YouTube channel. If you're new around here, please do hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you very much. Before I go on, I need to say that the Send It Squad for 2023 applications are now open. They will remain open until New Year's Day, I think. We're going to start on the 4th of Jan. 12 and a half week training plan, social group training plan. The current cohort have had a lot of success. Don't take my word for it. I'll leave a link down below to the website. Feel free to have a read, talk to some people who have been on it. I'm really looking forward to getting started in the new year with some of the people, or most of the people who have been on this current one, and also hopefully some more of you guys and girls. Today's video is all about a Q&A, so thank you very much to people who have fired some questions away. I thought it had been a long time since I've done this sort of thing, so put a post on Instagram, asked on a video, and thank you very much to all you guys and girls for asking questions. Now, there are one or two for Liz. She is not here, but I will drop in the parts with Liz answering questions now. Right, Elizabeth. <coughs> So I need to, oops. Stop doing that! Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Table's too close to it. House is too yeah, small. No! <laughs> <laughs> right, it's taking me, what, three or four days to track you down to, to do this damn QA. Yeah. I don't know why you've got any questions anyway when it's a triathlon Dan YouTube channel. However, there are two or three for you, so you've got to. Come as one. <laughs> Um, you've got to start us off. So you've got to set the scene, you've got to set the pace, you've got to be short, snappy, interesting, etc. Got it? No pressure. You've not given me any time to plan it. <laughs> no, I literally haven't given any preparation. I mean, I can't find them for one, so hang on. So these are a little bit deep, in honesty. Right, first one. Um, you're both such positive and inspiring people, and f far too kind. I don't laugh when you say that. I, say that. Um, I wonder how you cope with setbacks or life stress. I'm gonna cover do a separate video about setbacks that I've had recently. I wonder if you want to say anything about that. What she's saying is we come across as positive and, and inspiring because on a video you only see you only see that mm. because it's just a snapshot of the day or a snapshot of something you're doing. So I can see how that comes across. So she's just asking on the other side of that, I'm sure there are some setbacks and life stresses. How do you cope with them because you appear to be so positive? Mm. Okay. Got it? Yeah. So come on then, how do you cope with setbacks and life stress? Mind you, I mean, you, like, you're my girlfriend, so <laughs> life's pretty perfect. That's a big stress in itself. <laughs> it varies, really. I think, obviously, you only see on the camera the really positive things. You don't very often see the flip side of that. But um, just like everybody, it's normal to have life stresses and um, ups and downs and things like that. For me, you know, if I've had like a busy day at work or something, it might be that I come home and apart from having dinner in the evening, I do nothing but I'll stick a film on and just sort of have a chilled out evening. I think we're also quite good at reading each other as well. So like... You make it very clear when you're stressed. <laughs> I don't need to do so, with reading. So we, we both know how to tread around each other if we're, if we're stressed out. And I think that helps that... You know we do we do talk a lot as well don't we yeah. so if something's bothering us the other person is quite aware of what what the problem is yeah. <laughs> how much does the cat weigh in at oh he's not been weighed for about a year what was he when he was last That's weighed about seven kilos about seven kilos when he was last weighed um he's due at the vets for his annual vaccination on the 3rd of January, so we can update you then, but I can probably tell you he's put on weight it's since then, unfortunately. It's not looking good, bruv. <laughs> he loves the dreamers. Yeah. Who can run the fastest 10k, you and I? <laughs> we nearly split up before we went on camera about this one. Because <laughs> I said, we did actually chat about this, didn't we? And I said, what do you think my 10k time is? I basically said a time a lot slower than it actually yeah, was. Yeah, and you added offended. loads of minutes on it. So, <laughs> of course the chase, me. I'm amazing, thank you. Right, what was yours then? 38 minutes. 38 minutes, okay. So mine was 52 minutes. And we Gosh. both did that at balls over 10k. We believe in 2019, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. Yeah. If you had to choose just one pet, would it be cats or chickens? Or one type of pet? Um, I think it's got to be cats. Got to be my main man, Rupert. Yeah, a bit more personality. Well, they're not personalities, but they're a bit more loving, aren't they? Yeah, and having them inside and everything, it's a bit yeah. easier to look after a cat than it is chickens. Yeah, you have chickens inside sometimes, though. So, <laughs> hopefully, we've got the same answers for this. This one. Um, <laughs> does training ever get in the way of our relationship? Do you ever get annoyed that you finish work and sometimes don't? No, or you just finish work and sometimes. I don't get back until 10 p.m. after swimming. That happens so often. Um, 
You're always just, swimming. Yeah, always swimming, always in the pool, can't get me away. Uh, I suppose what the, what the purpose of that question is, I seem to do a lot of training, which I think I do. Does that ever annoy you? And if yeah. so, how do you deal with it? So, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a good answer for this one. <laughs> yes, it does sometimes annoy me. I sometimes feel that if I'm sort of doing the cooking every single night and things like that, then it does annoy me. But I've kind of accepted now that I... Obviously, you prioritise training a lot higher than I do. Whereas I... Um, you know, I love obviously my animals, I love trying to keep the house nice, I love going out and doing things with family and friends as well. So therefore, training comes up here for you and it probably comes like down here um, for me. So although I want to try and remain sort of fit and healthy, it's I'm not obsessed like you are. Um, but I don't feel that we could both be how you are because mm. nothing in the house would ever get done. Like, yeah. while you're <laughs> training, I'm doing your dinner and then you know or I do obviously the cleaning and things like that so mm -hmm. I've kind of accepted um, now that I don't do as much training because there's so many other things that I do enjoy doing as well and it's like you could quite easily say oh leave the cleaning but for me I can't do that because mm -hmm. I like cleaning I enjoy it I like having a nice house um, so I think I do sometimes feel frustrated if perhaps you're then saying to me, oh, you know, come on, shake a leg, you've not actually done any training recently or anything like that. Yeah. But I find it harder because I don't prioritise it as high up as what you do, whereas you put it literally up here. We're at a therapy session. Um, I feel like we've, <laughs> we spoke about this, haven't we, there? And also, on the flip side, uh, it frustrated me in the past that you weren't as perhaps passionate about training and fitness mm. and I couldn't understand why you weren't wanting to do the fastest run you could do or the best FTP you could do and why when you get home from work you don't want to get on the bike and train that sort of thing mm. and that would frustrate me but then after having those discussions you know I understand that you put perhaps house proudness and all the, all the things animals or even just not training higher than than I do mm -hmm. and it got to the point where I'd even I was that frustrated you're not frustrated when I offered to spend some money. I said, get a cleaner, didn't I? I just said, like, I don't care how much it costs, just get a cleaner. If that's the, the barrier between you doing the training to make you happy and healthy, because I know how happy and healthy I feel when I train, let's just get a cleaner and then we can go and do mm. more of this activity stuff together. And you said, actually, no, that's not the point. You, although cleaning is a chore, that you enjoy being house proud, and that's almost, it's not a hobby, but it's something you feel yeah. passionate about and want to do, isn't yeah. it? So. And it's probably because a while back, we did have a cleaner mm. and I had a completely different job so when I was a nursery manager I used to do my own shift pattern every week and I used to obviously say you know doing it for the the best for the nursery but in reality I was also thinking about how my training was going to map out for that week so Perfect. I'd regularly I'd give myself like a couple of longer days where I'd yeah. work half seven till six and they'd be my rest days and then I'd have a one o'clock finish one day I'd then be out on the bike in the afternoon or I'd have a 10 a.m start I'd go for my run in the morning Sounds great. and we had a cleaner at that point as well yeah. and then therefore if I'd been for a run in the morning, you come home and you've only got dinner to cook and you'd be doing your training and I was able to get a lot more training in. But now, I work in a school where I do less hours and I have a set, obviously, shift pattern every week that's the same, but I do much prefer that because it's a way better work-life balance for me, but it just means that I actually think now I've been doing it for a while, it's harder to, for me to get the training in than it probably was when I was doing my different shifts where I could kind of plan my shifts each week around okay. what training I wanted to do. Liz, we forgot we forgot one question, or I forgot one question. What are your plans for next year and what is your ultimate goal? So as I've already mentioned, I'm not overly keen on doing sort of loads of events. Um, I have done that in previous years, you know, had a great time, done a, a variety of different things and at the moment I do enjoy doing other things as well as the, the sports side of things and supporting Daniel does take up a lot of time as well. Um, so for me next year I just want to be sort of uh, fit and healthy and be able to like go out and do a 50 mile club ride in the Peak District um, with the cycling club and also have the fitness to be able to do like a long steady run as well so 
that will sort of just be my goals really to have a, a decent amount of fitness to be able to go out and do a long hilly bike ride and a long steady run. Let's put your finger out of the way. Don't have a estimate me. That's the wrong word, it's on phrase, it's don't ever think I ain't got yeah, it. Yeah, let me do that earlier then. No! Don't ever think I ain't got it. Okay, so hopefully Liz has set the scene for us there. Now, there are quite a few, so I'm going to try and rattle through and not spend too long on any one question. But if you've got any further or follow-up, just drop it in the comment section and I will respond to you. Now, in no particular order, just in the order that I've screenshot them. Um, who or what inspired me to take up triathlon? Now, when I started multi-sport or triathlon training, it was around 2014 to 2015. And I suppose we were just right on the back of the Brownlee era, obviously the L London Olympics 2012. But I don't think that was the main inspiration. I think locally to me, there were just quite a lot of people doing the sport. And so I was sick of getting injured running and just started cycling and a little bit of swimming. So I don't think there was only one person that majorly inspired me, but maybe riding bikes with people who were then doing triathlon as well. I think that sort of like pushed me on more than anything. Will I be doing Cork 70.3 again this year? Yes. Did I ever announce my new triathlon coach? Now, about a couple of months ago, I was coached for the month of October. It didn't work out. No, I didn't announce who it was. I haven't told anybody who it was. And yes, I ended that relationship at the end of October because it just didn't work out. And I'm really glad that I didn't say who it was for that exact reason. I am happy with the reasons why I ended it. And I don't want to badmouth somebody on the internet, particularly somebody who is their job to make a living through triathlon coaching. My experience might have been very different to somebody else's experience. So therefore, I don't want to say do or don't go with a certain person it is up to you like you to make you to find out your own way i think i think that's only fair isn't it especially when that person hasn't got the opportunity to respond to anything i say in this sort of environment it's not really fair that i've got this platform so no i didn't announce it and uh, uh no um i'm not coached right now thanks hannah when am i next in Mallorca? well i don't have anything booked at the minute i have as a habit gone in early may most years but i'm not sure if we'll go this year to be honest with liz's recent job change to working term time only i want to be go away with her and she can't come during the week that I normally go in May so I'm just trying to think about how we can best plan our annual leave and time together. Soft that isn't it I know but you know what it's like. Plans for a full TT season next year or focusing on running slash try. The only time trialing I'm going to focus on is team time trialing. I'd like, well, we're doing at least one, maybe two. We're doing the cycling time trials, national team time trial championships. We finished ninth this year doing it and we would certainly like to finish higher than that. We did very well, punched above our weight, but obviously we want to do better. So I look forward to doing that in June. And then we'll probably go back to the Clarion National Time Trial Championships again, which is normally in mid-July-ish. And we did win that this year. So looking forward to going back and hopefully retaining that title. Coach Woodnote coming in hot with what's more important, triathlon or YouTube? Now I suppose YouTube exists because triathlon exists. If my YouTube didn't exist, I would still do triathlon. So I'd suppose triathlon is more important. And also I get enjoyment from this, I get some happiness from this, but I get a lot of happiness from doing running, cycling, swimming. So I'd say triathlon is more important, but I do love this and I do care about you all. Will I be getting a new coach? If I'm honest, I don't think so. Not because I think I'm too good to be coached or I know best. There's only so many things you can focus on in life and so many areas of your life you can take direction in or do as you're told. Now, I'm working with Sam at Total Endurance Nutrition. He's coaching me nutrition-wise. If I'm honest, I feel like that's, that's great and it's, it feels like I'm being properly coached. And I don't think I could take separate coaching direction for my training as well as that. I just, I feel like I've only got so much mental capacity and energy to direct towards these things. And I feel like the nutrition and the food is the main thing I'm working on. And I'm doing some training, but I'm not fully focused on the training. It's more about just being consistent and focus on the diet. And that's absolutely fine. I think if I get to a point where I'm happy with my body composition and my eating habits, then uh, the idea is that I'm then, then able to do my own nutrition myself. But at that point, I might consider a triathlon coach, but I'm certainly not. And it's one of the most popular things I get messaged is people who are coaches either offering their services 
for free or discounted or just offer them in general and I'm so so grateful for it and I, I feel sorry when I say no to people but I just I just can't take on that that capacity at the minute and I, even the thought of having to have like a consultation call and then like a check-in every week or fortnight or something I just don't have the time for it I, I've been doing triathlon a few years now so I've got a vague idea of what to do I, I think a pretty good idea and understand my own body so um, I think I'm doing okay as I, as I am and I'll just continue to do some good training I certainly take uh, tips and advice from Coach Woodnote and other people who I come across so um, yeah we'll see how we go but no not at the minute AG1 yes or no now I did have to google what this is Rob and I understand this to be like a supplement for greens or something now I'm not, I've never used it so I'm not going to bad mouth it however what I will say is I pay a nutritionist to tell me what to eat and he's never said supplement with that sort of stuff so um, if it works for you then it works for you it works for anybody then fine but I, I don't think it's necessary for me and I've got no plans to start taking it in an ideal world, what is your ultimate goal in triathlon? Thank you for the question. And I think sometimes I come across like, or I think I come across like, oh, performance doesn't matter. I'm just here to have a good time. And that is true, but I think it is good to have goals. I try and focus on input goals rather than output goals. So focus on running several times a week rather than, oh, I want to run a whatever time half marathon, that sort of thing. But I think it is good to have a goal. Now, I like goals to be a like a stretch goal. So realistically, are you going to meet that goal? Probably not. But I couldn't sit here and say I'd like to win the Ironman World Championships because obviously that's probably not going to happen. Whereas something that is perhaps just out of reach, but not ridiculous could be good. So my ultimate goal, I think, is so my like long distance triathlon journey started at Outlaw events. I did Outlaw Half Nottingham in 2016 done all of them since then done loads of outlaw events now some of the outlaw events are championship races like the british middle distance champs uh the might outlaw nottingham half is a pathway event or gateway event to a pro license so it gets a good field so i'm never going to win them however i would love to win an outlaw event which isn't a championship race of any kind so for example outlaw x in 2023 isn't a championship race of any kind it's still probably going to be a good race and it's still probably going to attract some good athletes who would beat me but that to me appeals to me as a do you know what it's not absolutely bonkers to think about if you had the perfect day or with the right improvements that you could maybe not win but you know like come in the top 10 or top five you know something like that you know get some sort of notable result at a fairly sized race but when the <laughs> when the right field is there and so on so yeah i think Performing well at an outlaw event and being in a notable position would probably be my, be my ultimate goal. Only a couple to go now. Does a treadmill run count if you achieve the new PB while doing it? No, in my opinion. And TT Wheels, a uh, story about Hunt this purchase that fell through. Right, again, I'm not bad mouthing the company at all because actually Hunt's customer service were very good and they rectified the problem as best as they could. So I bought a Hunt disc wheel and it was the first time they produced the disc wheel. I couldn't get in first gear, the rear mech was touching the wheel. A few other riders reported that as well. I had one of the first ones that was delivered and um, obviously they couldn't fix it. They couldn't just redesign the wheel straight away. So they tried to get me to fix it in a couple of different ways with like spaces and stuff. It wasn't gonna work. I'd also brought a front wheel to match because I like having matching wheel sets. And um, when it became apparent that I, this wasn't gonna work, I just sort of said, you know, I, I can't use this wheel. They offered to refund me on both wheels and obviously I had to send them back. So that's what I did. So we didn't fall out in any way. Yes, I was disappointed that the wheel didn't work and I think that they probably should have tested that wheel with a range of group sets and bikes. And I'm sure they probably did, but there's, you can't test it in every eventuality. So that meant then that I then had no wheels. So then I started using <laughs> Lizard's wheels, which was a Zip 404 front and an 808 rear with an easy disc on. And I used that for pretty much half a year or so. And that was great. And to be honest, I was thinking about using something like that longer term. I'm not against using an easy disc at all. I like the product. I like the fact that it's really cost effective for people if you're using a deep section wheel or any wheel and then converting it to a disc wheel. And then my friend Matt, Coach Woodnote, went from a rim brake TT bike to a disc brake TT bike. And so he was selling a Walker Brothers disc wheel at mates rates. So I basically said, yes, I'll have that. And it was tubeless ready. And then I bought from Walker Brothers like an X display or like a reduced tri-spoke front. So that meant then I had a solid disc rear and a tri-spoke front. So that's what I've still got. Now, I quite like the wheel set, but the disc wheel, I'm struggling to get a tubeless tire seated on if I haven't managed to. So it is on my mind to have a look for another disc wheel, but the reality is, is that they're so expensive that it's just like, it's just no like, no point. The, I think the difference between discs are quite small and 
I don't know if it's worth it, but I do need to get a tubeless tyre seated on it. So I'm keeping my eye, eye out for things. I like having a matching wheel set, but yeah, who knows. I've not completely written off trying to get a wheel brand on board, but it's just not looking likely at this minute. I'm not even trying to be honest, so <laughs> we'll see. I think that is it. Thank you very much. I enjoyed doing that. I hope, hope that's given you some information, maybe some stuff you didn't know, some stuff you didn't know. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button down below and I'll see you tomorrow for probably not much triathlon training and I'll cover that in a separate video. See you later.